Okay, so um, we are we have a page open that is actually a demo version of Sumlink, but when you connect either to the Android app or using uh, a web browser on any of the phones, when you connect them to Sumlink, it's going to look just like this. Uh, obviously, minus the mouse, you're going to be touching these on your touch screen instead of using the mouse. But I'm going to demonstrate some of the adjustments that can maybe by Sumlink. So when you initially connect Sumlink to your phone and you open the sumlink.local then you'll connect here uh, press garage door press connect operator search for operator and then while it's searching for operator you press the radio button and immediately a serial number will show up here under active operator you hit connect and now you're connected to the operator and can make the adjustments necessary i'm going to give a brief overview of what sumlink can do and then just gonna go into settings and actually make some specific adjustments. Commissioning is the things that are taught to the opener uh, in the initial programming. Safety devices that are connected to it, force values, travel length. You can do a factory reset here where all some link settings are also erased. You can use some link to teach radio, to delete radio or to lock out radio. We won't go into any of those, of those now. It's pretty intuitive and easy to use when you start clicking into it. Um, it'll automatically pick up the language of your browser and adapt to it. So English, Spanish, whatever you have um, will show up. The other one that is primarily used is uh, info. Info is memory and events that you can't actually adjust. But this is where you go if you have, say, phantom, uh, phantom opening or phantom closing to see what is causing it to happen. So for example, if you click into event history, you'll see um, what remote devices or wall buttons were used to operate the door, to open it or to close it, and when that happened, uh, and in what order. You can see safety devices that are programmed to it, travel uh, position, force path is a graph that reads out um, how it travels, how the door travels, where the stiff points are, and so on. Um, you can see how many cycles are on the operator. But the one we really want to look at is settings. Settings is where you go to adjust specific functions of the operator. Uh, for example, if you turn dip switch two on the control, uh, sorry, on the motor carriage on, then channel two, radio channel two becomes partial opening instead of, instead of light function. And if you click into partial opening, you can adjust here it shows you whether dip switch two is off or on. In this case, it's actually turned off. But if dip switch two is turned on, then I can go in here and adjust the partial opening position. In percentage, I can either, and this is true of any of these, I can drag and drop, or I can double click here and type in a value that I want. And hit enter, and then press save and then it's saved at that percentage. <clears throat> For all of these windows also, you can click factory settings and it will go back to the way it comes default from the factory. Every time you have to press save. Also, when you're clicking through, don't use the browser back button, use the back button here, else you'll uh, actually kind of get confused as to where you are. Uh, closing function, you can set a back jump so the door uh, seals hard and then jumps back a little bit to make the manual release easy. Ventilation function, this is the adjustments you can make if you have Senso installed. Um, you can tell the door how far you want it to open, distance in millimeters up to one meter for ventilation. You can have uh, change the activation threshold this is humidity in percentage. You can change the end ventilation threshold. Has to be a minimum 5% difference. Um, you can also change, the, change it according to duration. So you can have it uh, close at, open at 80, close at 70, or close after 120 seconds, sorry, 120 minutes if you want. You can also read out ambient temperature as well as uh, current humidity on Sunlink. 
Lighting function is where you adjust functions of uh, the lights on the motor carriage, uh, as well as lights that are installed and controlled using relay. Um, lighting can be adjusted individually, how long it stays on after opening, after closing, um, after it's activated using motion sensor, after an interlock switch is broken using it or opened. Um, all of those can be set up to 10 minutes, but if you're using radio channel two to turn light on, radio channel two comes factory preset at one hour, but you can turn it up to 10 hours. So let's say you have relay connected and you want to use relay for accent lighting on your garage door and you want it to turn on two hours in the evening, you can change this to 7200, hit enter and hit save. And now when you use radio channel two, it'll stay on for two hours instead of one hour. You can also have the light on the motor carriage um, on during travel or blinking during travel and you can additionally adjust the functions of radio channel to whether it's uh, using internal or external lighting um, and relay. Um, and you can have the light come on when an interlock switch is broken. So that, for example, if you have a pass door, if you click this, you can have the light come on when the pass door is open through the garage door. Speed can be adjusted. The factory speed is usually 7,200 RPM opening and 4,000 RPM closing. Um, if you try to adjust past what the opener considers safe for the weight and calibration uh, or balancing of the door, then the opener will just slow it back down to what it considers safe. But you can match the closing speed to opening speed if you want, or you can also close them down if you're concerned, if you want the door to be safer. None of the settings that you see here can be adjusted outside of UL325 and safety specifications for the United States and Canada. Sensitivity uh, is where you can go if you have a really heavy door that is not balanced well and you want to adjust it a little bit so that uh, it's not too sensitive or you want to have a light door and you want it to be, to, to be even more sensitive to adjust to reverse more easily when it hits an object, you can adjust it up or down. Um, least sensitive at a sensitivity factor of one and most sensitive at 10. If you have buzzer connected, uh, early warning time and safety facilities, you can set the opener to have an early warning before it closes or before it opens respectively here. And you can also set the safety edge to be effective during open or during closing. So for example, if you're using the opener on a sliding door, you may want the safety edge to be effective during opening in, uh, as well as during closing. So you have a safety edge on either side. If you have buzzer connected, this is where you set the functions of buzzer. Buzzer is usually automatically set to be to, to sound in the case of attempted burglary or someone trying to jam the door, to, to, to jimmy the door open. You can turn it off here if you want, but it comes factory set turned on. Um, you can turn it on so that it, so that buzzer sounds briefly before the door closes. Uh, you can have it turned on while the door is closing. Uh, if you have a wicket door or a pass door through the door, through the garage door, you can have have the buzzer sound when that door is open briefly. And you can have it just sound for five seconds if you want, or up to 255 seconds while the door is open. You can also set it to have early warning before opening and travel during opening. Automatic closing if dip switch one on the motor carriage is turned on. Here again, you can see where the dip switch, uh, this will be slid to the right if dip switch at one is turned on. You can have it fully automatic. It comes factory set. Normally actually it comes factory set to 30 seconds. 
Um, that's the factor preset. 30 seconds stay open. You can adjust that up to six minutes to stay open or down to zero seconds where it opens and immediately closes. You can also set it uh, for something like anti-tailgating or depending if you want to make sure that someone goes out before it closes. Uh, let's say if you're using it at a fire department, you could set this at 240 seconds, set it as long as possible, and then turn on the shortening of the stay open time so that if the light barriers are broken before the 240 seconds expires, if this is turned on, and the way it's set up right now, actually, the door will close five seconds after the light barrier has been interrupted if that happens before the 240 seconds expires. If the light barrier is not interrupted, then it will close at 240 seconds. Service mode will allow you to set a notification on the door, sorry, on the opener, when it has run X number of cycles. For example, for example, if you have 10,000 cycle springs on the opener on your, on your garage door, then you can set an alert at 8,000 cycles and you have to check this box to turn it on and hit save. Now at 8,000 cycles from now, the opener lights will start blinking while it travels and that tells you that it's time to change the springs so you don't end up with uh, broken springs. It will tell you how many cycles are left to go um, or you can also set the service in operating days. Thank you for watching this video from NorthShoreCommercialDoor.com. Please subscribe to our channel so we can continue to make content like this. Thank you.